Hey guys, Phil here. I'm going to now be shooting my picture for the brown box challenge. Now, as you know, my item for the brown box challenge is the Millennium Falcon. It's actually pretty awesome. Now, I thought it would be pretty cool to take a picture of this Millennium Falcon and make it look like it's actually in one of the movies. So what I've done is I've gone online and I've found a picture of an Imperial Star Destroyer. Now my goal is to take this picture of the Millennium Falcon and make it look like it belongs in the movie. Now to shoot the picture, I'm not at the loft. In fact, I'm in my basement. Now my pretty much unfinished basement, which I've used a little bit as a you know small kind of product studio, but my goal is actually to hang the Millennium Falcon from here so I can light it and make it look like it's being lit by the sun in outer space. So now I have the Millennium Falcon hung up using some fishing line. Now my goal here is to actually get my flash, fire my flash wirelessly across the top of this, creating some pretty harsh shadows that hopefully will match with the picture that I'm going to use as the background. Now I've grabbed a couple pictures of the Millennium Falcon. I'm going to now take those, find the one I like on the computer, put it into Photoshop, and actually run through the editing process. Now I'm hoping to use the screen capture software to show you what uh, what that looks like. Let's go to the computer and find out. First thing to do is open the pictures that I shot of the Millennium Falcon and find one that works. Now I'm going to go with the backside picture of the Falcon. I think it matches better with I think final goal that I have in mind of it kind of arcing towards it. So I'm going to do a quick edit to get the two kind of matched up, drop them into the same frame and get an idea of what I might be looking at here. Now, the original Star Destroyer shot is a little bit too small. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate the stars a little bit, randomize the pattern, flip it, adjust, copy, paste, that kind of thing to expand the size of the image out so that I have a little bit of room that I can kind of play with. And it's important that the stars remain relatively random. So as I'm copying, I'm flipping horizontally, flipping vertically and adjusting, and then finally adjusting the overall canvas size to better match the kind of size that I'm going for here. So now that I have the size I'm looking for, I'm gonna superimpose the Millennium Falcon. Now I'm just dropping it in, getting an idea of kind of what I'm looking for, uh, getting rid of the, the wires, the fishing line that held it up, and just doing a quick uh, kind of clone heel to get rid of the wires over top of the Falcon itself, and then just going back to make it neat. Uh, now that that's done, I'm gonna do a little select and mask around. Just gonna jump over and refine my selection a little bit, make a new layer with layer mask, and do some final adjustments uh, on the background. Now I'm adjusting the overall color of the Star Destroyer, as well as I'm adjusting what the Falcon looks like. I'm also adding a little bit of noise to the Falcon itself to give it uh, a little bit of a closer film appearance. Uh, now we all know that the Millennium Falcon has a blue light that comes out of the back, the blue engine, so I'm just gonna add that in here, play with the color, try and get it to look like it did in the movies, and just erasing out something in the bottom there that I thought didn't quite match. Now I'm going to place the Millennium Falcon on a bit of an attack vector uh, to have it coming in. Uh, now a, the final image has a little bit of a different look than I have here. I have some turbo lasers coming from the Star Destroyer as well as I have some lasers coming in from the Millennium Falcon. Unfortunately my uh, capture didn't work and I managed to not actually record any of that and instead of going back through and re-editing I just thought I would you know, post the final shot. This is the final shot here uh, and it is at a 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio which is a little bit odd however I thought it matched the cinema look that I was going for with this. I wanted this to kind of look like it was a clip from the movie. I think it worked pretty well but let's see how it fares to everyone else's. Hey there guys, how's it going? Uh, so, I'm about to start working on my brown box challenge photo. As you may have seen already, the brown box I got, ended up with, is the Ouija board. Um, this isn't necessarily the thing I probably would have picked, 
but I think it's pretty cool what I could do with something like this. Some people's beliefs about the Ouija board are pretty strong. It's one of those things that if you believe in it, it can freak you right out. And if you don't believe in it, it's like a game. And unfortunately, the people that believe in it think the people that think it's a game are ruining the world. Uh, it could be fun, but what I'm gonna try and do with this is a light painting thing. I always try and do a little bit of light painting because I think you can make your own mood, you can do your own thing, where if I have to sit there and, and direct people to make a photo, eh, it's not usually my thing. Now, there's a lot of light painters who do the thing where you have a person in the shot and they light paint all around them. There's some amazing artists out there who do work that way. I'm not really that vibe. I'd rather just create a little scene. But I thought I would just be, I'd play the role of the guy using the Ouija board and we'll see how it goes. You never know what you can create in light painting. In fact, I don't know what I'm gonna create in light painting. I have a general idea of what I hope to get, but uh, it'll probably end up being something totally different. I will be adding in off-camera flash to light me up at a specific area so that all of me is bright in one shot. And then after that flash is over, the exposure will continue and I'll just walk around doing the light painting. Gear that I always use for light painting, my trusty Mr. Snaps. The D700 Nikon, I just love this camera and I'm just really, 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 really happy to use it. Um, my trusty 24 to 85 with macro. Now this isn't one of the newfangled lenses that has the VR, who cares about VR? When you're light painting, you're using a tripod. So what it is, is a lens that gives me a ridiculously close focus distance. If I zoom in past 35 millimeter, I flip a switch, now my focus can go uh, probably as close as right here. That's pretty close, especially when we're talking about a lens that I can be at 85 millimeter and focus here. And I love this thing. Every light painting shot I've ever made, as far as I can remember, aside from maybe Fire on Ice, was made with that. The concept will be, um, dude's sitting there playing it on his couch and all of a sudden the spirits come in. And that would be through the light painting. Uh, we'll see how that goes and wish me luck. Take care guys, have fun and enjoy my brown box challenge photo. So what's going on guys? So we were tasked to do a picture of the thing we got from our brown box and this was it. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do. I also brought a glass ball with me as well. I'm gonna see if I can get some pictures of it and uh, I'll show you what the results are. So my, what I imagined was shooting the glass ball um, in front of this picture and then uh, getting that kind of like refraction kind of thing. So, we'll see how that goes. But what I'm shooting on is a Canon 5D Mark III plus a Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. We have some bombardiers here, and I'm gonna try to get a picture of that with a little uh, circle, finger circle. Game. So uh, it's not going to plan, or as planned. Sorry, I really don't know what to do anymore. Let me just take a picture of it somewhere else. The sun is too bright for my liking. Uh, it's creating too harsh of a shadow. So let me see if I can do something else with this instead. But it was a good thought, but I couldn't, couldn't do it. So, bring you back somewhere else and we'll, we'll see if we can do another day or something. Hello. 
Uh, well, I'm here in the Centra grocery store parking lot and I'm here to do my brown box challenge. And while we wait for Devin to finish his cheeseburger. There's pickles. You said you wanted the pickles. I do want the pickle. Um, we are going to get in there in a moment, do some shopping, and get this party started. My arm's getting tired. Devin's adamant about getting shopping carts. I'm all about the basket. Or grabbing everything and just hugging it all the way to the checkout line. Uh, I need a couple things to complete this brown box challenge, so let's get shopping. Soft? Uh, sour? Uh, no, it's sweet. It's kind of mushy, and there's like black stuff in it. Mm. And then you can wear the outside as a hat afterwards. <laughs> so the question is, what do I need? I got some pomegranate. Ooh, these are good too, these apples. Oh, look at that massive mango. This one right there. Some salt dip. Mm-hmm. If you've never had Unripe mango with salt or with salt dip, you're missing out. Mm. How do we feel about these mangoes here? I feel like this one is redder. Okay, we'll go with that one. <laughs> and one of these yellow mangoes, but look kind of crusty. How do you feel about Centra? I like Centra. <laughs> That's good to see. I have our fruit and a couple other things I still need, so let's go take a look in one of my favorite aisles. What it is? Not my favorite aisle, but check out the sauce aisle. Almost looks like the side of my fridge. Welcome to one of my favorite aisles, the ramen noodle aisle. Full of sodium and all the fun things that are horrible for your body, but taste so yummy. It's so good, it makes you angry. Hey, who wants to come over for a seafood party? Uh, all I want right now is a big bowl of giant ramen noodles. Not... Not mukbang quantity, but enough. This. Super spicy. No heartburn afterwards, but instant regret because of all that sodium. I just want to say, if you've never been to a large Asian grocery store like Centra or TNT, you are missing out. There's so many fun things here, things you've never even heard of before, and you'll discover some delicious food and maybe some that you don't think is so delicious. But uh, a good selection of good stuff. How's that for description? A good selection of good stuff. Yeah. Well, we almost got everything I needed. I'm just missing one key element. Oh, it's very blue out here. Look on totally off. Anyway, we have one more stop to go. See if we can get this final element for my brown box challenge. It is really cold today. I don't remember where I parked. <laughs> uh, oh, it's not my car, that's why. Yeah, it's car, that's why. Did you know it costs a dollar now to take the carts out? Not 25 cents? Back in my day, when this was all farmland, <laughs> it was only a quarter. Okay, I'm at the studio here to finish my brown box challenge. Um, as you may recall, I got the Polaroid camera here. Um, this was actually a switcheroo because I got the Ouija board and I wasn't down for that. So I'm glad I got this instead. I have a couple ideas of what I want to do. I only have about five frames left in this, so I kind of have to make it count. It comes with eight, and Devin and I played with the camera, and we accidentally took one, which was of the ceiling, and tested out two more shots, so we have five left to go. I'm going to plan it out here first, um, see how it looks before I actually take the picture, and then I'm going to put it all together, and you'll see the final photo.
finish shooting everything, just gotta clean up. But in case you haven't figured it out yet, um, Devin and I are expecting our first little ramen noodle. So coming July 2018, it's gonna be a party of three. Um, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet, but this is the only instant noodle package I can find that had a little person on it. I think, hope you can see that there. Uh, it looks like he's delivering noodles in a box. So I will ensure our child delivers noodles in a box. At least once. At least to me. Uh, this is really fun to shoot today. I'm glad I got this because it worked out perfectly because I was gonna do this anyway to do, uh, to make the announcement. So this was perfect. So that's that. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video and thanks for watching. Thanks guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of what we get to do with this stuff and you'll see the results soon.